Did you know that nobody makes new floppy disks anymore? Sure, you can find websites and Amazon and eBay listings of so-called new floppy disks for sale, but those are actually just old stockpiles from the 90s and 2000s which they're just selling off. They're not actually newly manufactured anymore. If you're like most people, you probably haven't given it a second thought because you probably haven't bought a box of these in over 20 years, and you may not even be old enough to remember the older floppy disks that actually were floppy. But if you're someone like me who enjoys using old computers, that is concerning news. And yes, the vintage computing community has come up with solutions for replacing floppy disks and hard drives with solid state media such as compact flash cards, SD cards, or USB thumb drives. But those are not always as convenient as they may seem. For example, for about $100, I could replace this Macintosh Classics SCSI hard drive with an SD card. But unless I cut a hole in this case and make a custom mounting bracket for that adapter, the only practical way I'll have to transfer data between this machine and the outside world will still be a floppy disk. And those solid state media adapters are not yet available for all vintage computers. For example, this Tandy 1100FD laptop. It's a lovely little machine with the DeskMate graphical user interface, a word processor, and a 90,000 word spelling checker dictionary in ROM, which is great for typing documents. But if I want to actually save those documents, the only way I'll have to do it is on a 3.5 inch double density floppy disk. It's still not too uncommon to find 3.5 inch 1.44 megabyte floppy disks out in the wild, maybe even in that dusty corner of the supply closet at work. But when it comes to 3.5 inch double density diskettes, or any kind of 5 and a quarter inch diskettes, those are definitely becoming scarce. And yes, you could take a high density diskette and cover the media sense hole with a piece of tape. And then you can format it as a double density 720k diskette, but that is not going to be reliable. It may work in the short term, but don't be surprised if you come back to this disk a year from now and discover that your data is no longer readable. You can find many inexpensive bulk lots of 3.5 inch diskettes, but almost all of them contain only high density diskettes. But luckily, after much searching, I was able to find a lot of 29 double density 3.5 inch diskettes. The seller was asking $10 or best offer. I offered $7.50 and they accepted. And since they were a fellow New Jerseyan, the shipping only cost about $7. So in total, I paid about $15. They were listed as four parts are not working, but I thought it was likely that the seller simply didn't have a floppy drive to test them with. So I was willing to take the risk. And here's the box they arrived in. Unfortunately it does not contain a fellow's EconoStore 40 diskette filing tray, but it does contain these things. Audio cassette tapes. No, not cassette tapes. That's right, audio cassette tapes. No, these things are three and a half inch floppy disks and hopefully 29 of them as advertised. I haven't actually counted these yet. So first I'm going to take a look at each disc, see if anything is still on them without revealing any personal information, and then later I'm going to try reformatting all these discs, see if they have any bad sectors, and see how many good discs we have out of this lot of 29. So the first disc I pulled out is unbranded, Someone wrote in pencil CV, a squiggle, and tank. So, see what's on that disc. The volume label is info. It has two zip files which were last accessed in 1997. I would guess tank is some kind of game involving tanks, but I'm not sure about CV. Okay, read me. CV, the Chinese View Program. Convenient if you don't have Chinese Windows. So that's what CV means. Not something relevant to me, but it's interesting nonetheless. Next, we have a Gold Star Disc, and someone wrote on it, Old Games. 
So I'll see if there's any old games on it. Uh, we do have a couple zip files. Last accessed in 1996 and 1997. Nothing that I really recognize, so I won't go through each one. Next is a KO diskette, or I think you're supposed to say it as cow. Just says zip on it. So probably more zip files on this one. <laughs> the volume label is Joey's disc. Does have two zip files. Last accessed in 1996. NBA and Sky Shark. Probably more games. This one is a Dyson diskette. No relation to the company that makes overpriced vacuum cleaners. Somebody wrote ARC and then crossed it out. That was an older format of compressed files before ZIP became the standard. So maybe it previously contained some ARC files. Some more text that's crossed out. I think I can make out WinZip. So maybe that's what they were using. Which would make sense if this was around 1997 when this person stopped using these discs. Does have more zip files, probably more games. I see Jeopardy, P Master, Poker, Quantlet. Yeah, more games. Another Dyson diskette. Someone pasted over an old label that said Lemmings. They put on a new label that says 688 Attack Sub. So clearly this person was into games. And that's probably what this contains. Ooh, those are interesting file names. Those look like directories, but they're all corrupted. And that's not a valid date, 1934, or would that be 2034? But it does have some zip files, but that DAT, I'm not going to look in that one. 688, Alien Cities in Math. And the volume name was Lemmings. So indeed, they did originally have Lemmings on it. And when they put new data on the disc, they didn't change the volume label. Another KO disc. WP 5.1 crossed out. That would have been WordPerfect 5.1. Tank War 3.2 crossed out. And then zip files. Volume label is zip file. Two files on it, Golf Kong and Monopoly. I'm sure you can find all these games online, so I'm not going to bother archiving them. This one is a Dyson 100 disc. Golf crossed out. I guess that means Hercules, CGA, and VGA. Kong crossed out. And then Special File. So let's see what's in that Special File, if anything. does have a couple documents. I'm not going to look in those. Those are probably personal information. Max cheat codes. Okay, more games information. And someone saved their config.sys file on that disk. Let's see. 40 buffers. 50 files. That's a lot. Clearly this was from Windows 95. And it looks like they originally had a Matsushita CD-ROM drive, and they rimmed that out when they replaced it with a Sony CD-ROM drive. Another Dyson diskette, Suzy Logic Simulator. Bunch of files on this. Suzy.exe. I'm a little bit worried about that. I don't know if I want to see what Suzy looks like, so I'm not going to try that. Next is another Gold Star disc. Test Drive 2 crossed out. Ford Simulator. And Julia Final. So a mix of games and personal documents. The volume label is Ford Sim 2, but I don't see any sign of it left on the disc. Instead, we have a bunch of VSD files, which I'm not exactly sure what they're used for. It does have one Word document, which was likely Julia's final, as it says on the label. This is another Dyson 100 disc, 
It has somebody's full name on it, so I'm not going to reveal that. But it says Personal Files and Julia's Resume 1997. And indeed, it contains a bunch of personal files, including a resume. So I'm not going to be going through those. Then we have this unbranded disc that says SimCity Disc 1. I don't know if I'll find the rest of the discs for SimCity in the box. Volume label is Dell-100224. And it does appear to be SimCity on it. Another Dyson 100 disc. Castle Math crossed out. And then it says Zip Files. It has three Zip Files on it. Castle, Ford, and Wheel. So more games. Yet another Dyson disc. Star is the only thing it says on it. But I noticed where usually there's just a blank here, it actually says made in USA. So if you see this blank on the back of a three and a half inch disc and you wonder what it was for, that's to indicate where the disc was made. Although eventually they stopped doing that. And indeed it just has star.zip on it. Another generic unbranded disc, potvin.bump. But you notice something hiding under that label? That's a Sound Blaster disc that somebody covered up and reused. So clearly at some point, if I can actually type, they had a Sound Blaster card. NHLBMP.zip. I looked it up and that was Dennis Potvin who played hockey for the New York Islanders from 1973 to 1988. But it still has the volume label from the Sound Blaster disc, Vox Kit. That was one of the programs that Sound Blaster included. Another Dyson disc, looks like it had some kind of label on it but it got peeled off. So, mystery disc. has a Word document and fs7.bump. Now we have a totally plain disc. No branding, no label, though it does have some remnants of where one used to be. Two zip files on it. Dune 107 and Dune 2 CHT. Probably some other kind of game. Well here's a high density disc. Not what I was looking for, but I can use these as well. This was a 3Com 56K wind modem driver disc for Windows ME. So let's see if that's still what's on it. And yes, it does appear to be 3Com drivers from 2001. Another high density 3Com disc. Again, not what I was looking for, but I can use those as well. But this does not appear to be a 3COM disc. That looks more like a Windows ME emergency boot disc. Another 3COM high density disc. See what's on this one. 3595Win98. But it does appear to have 3COM files on it. From 2001. Yeah, we're getting more of these 3COM high density discs. So it's not going to be all 720K. 3595NT. So let's see. Yeah, they were different uh, Windows versions Windows 2000, Windows 98. Looks like this one is for Windows NT. Disc 1 of 2. So we're probably going to get disc 2 of 2. Nope, Windows 98 second edition. Let's just see what's on that. Yep, Windows 98 SE, 3COM drivers. Another high density disc. 
has remnants of scotch tape on it for some reason. Worm3 and Slice.com. It's only 2K, whatever Slice.com is. Written by Bob Flanders and Michael Holmes. Yeah, it's probably to split up a file onto multiple discs. Here's a Maxell Super RD high density disc. Bunch of stuff written on it. VHDL Netlist crossed out, Windows 95 crossed out, DOS 6 crossed out, config.sys roexec.bat for Gateway 2000 crossed out. The only thing not crossed out is Windows 98 boot disk. So that's probably what it's going to be. And yes, that does appear to be a Windows 98 boot disk. Thankfully, we're now back to some more double density disks. Technology library. Some things I can't really make out. So, we'll see what that is. Probably more personal files. Tech lib. See what's in that folder. Bunch of LIB files. Uh oh. I don't think this disk is going to be good. Another Dyson disk. Rather worn out looking label. Some things crossed out that I can't even read. Printer file 1992 files. And it actually does say made in USA on it. Indeed, it has a bunch of files from 1992, although they were last accessed in 1999. Look like personal files. Another Dyson disk. Utilities. Dapacap VHDL. Made in USA. eDraw version 1.02. 1990 by Department of Electrical Engineering at the University of Calgary. Or Calgary, as they say. Beta test version only. Mentions an IEEE 488 interface board driver. Don't really have a use for whatever that is, but interesting nonetheless to see what these discs were used for. Another Dyson 100 disc. VHDL codes 91. VHDL code. Copyright Novatel Communications Limited 1990. Performs the rotation and despreading of the digitized Q value using side magnitude zero relative arithmetic. Moreover, whenever fluorescent score motion is required, it may also be employed in conjunction with a drawn reciprocation ding alarm to reduce sinusoidal deplenoration. Another Dyson disc, I think that also says VHDL 90. More VHD files on it. So whatever that is, they were using it a lot. That one was made in USA. Another Dyson disc. This one looks even older. WP 5.1 crossed out. Something else crossed out. Archive files 1993. As a document, yeah, Andrew, 1993, personal files. Yeah, another Dyson disc that seems to be their favorite brand. Has somebody's full name, personal file, Keen L or Keen 1. Wonder if that's Commander Keen. Do TIE Fighter crack. Yeah, people were cracking games back then. Keen 1, yeah, that must have been Commander Keen, but I don't think it's that anymore because the only file on it is front.ovl, made in USA on that disc. Dyson 100, residue of where a label used to be. Nick 
nothing on it. Totally blank label, totally blank disc. Though it does look like somebody wrote something on that. But it's so faded I can't make it out. Paint show! And it does appear to be some kind of paint program because it has a bunch of TIFF files on it. No branding. Sim CD Disc 2. Earlier saw Disc 1. But of course Sim City is archived online, so I don't need to save that. Bunch of numbers, and it does appear to be another Sim City disc. Getting down to the last three here. Uh Media Vision. Thunderboard program disc version 1.1 Harvard.se2. Did this person actually go to Harvard? Thunder B11, but it has Harvard.back, Harvard.se2. I can't make heads or tails of what these Harvard files are, but it's clearly not a MediaVision Thunderboard program disc anymore. Sentech, never heard of that brand. Micro floppy disc. Scorch. Nice orange disc. And that one has somebody's name on it. Scorch15.zip. Not going to bother looking at it. It's probably just personal files. Finally, we're down to the last disc. Zip files written in red pen. And then something written in blue pen I can't really make out. Let's see what's on it. And two folders from 1993, Docs Hint and Misc. Bunch of zip files there. Probably, uh, well it says Hint, so it's probably hints for all these games. So that was it, the last disc. All these are 720K. These are high density. And this is that one disc that gave me errors, so it's probably not going to be usable. So after a long time spent formatting all these floppy disks, here's what I ended up with. I did indeed get 29 3.5 inch double density 720k floppy disks. Four of them have bad sectors. The rest of them formatted without any errors. But I also got a free bonus which was not advertised in that eBay listing. Seven high density 1.44 megabyte floppy disks. All of which formatted without any errors. But I'm not going to give up just yet on these four discs which had bad sectors. Because I know the floppy drive in this laptop tends to be rather picky when it's formatting and reading discs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bulk erase those discs with this scary high power bulk eraser. Because in the past I've experienced some floppy discs which had bad sectors. But after I bulk erase them... They formatted without any problems. And I think the reason for that is many of these discs, as you saw, were rewritten multiple times on probably multiple different drives, not all of which may have been in perfect alignment. So you tend to get some residual magnetism on the tracks along the edges, and that may confuse the drive and cause it to end up with bad sectors. But if you bulk tape erase the disc, it cleans off all the magnetism and that gives it a clean slate to work with and that may be able to resurrect these discs and get rid of some of those bad sectors. So I'll give that a try. So here are those four discs I just bulk erased. Let's see if there's anything left readable on them. Shouldn't be. Should just get an error message when it's trying to read the disc. After a few seconds. 
Yeah, I don't think it's going to find anything. Yep, general failure, which means there's nothing left on that disk. So format a colon slash f colon 720 to indicate it's a 720k disk slash u for an unconditional format. See, what did I tell you? No errors after I bulk erased it. So don't give up on disks which have bad sectors. Try bulk erasing them and then formatting them again. So let's go through the other three here. See if that holds true for them as well. Now I still hear some... Yeah, that one is still... You can hear it trying multiple times to format the track. Yep, bad sector, so this one's going in the garbage. Can't save them all, but bulk racing may help save some of them. Oh, I can hear it retrying. So I don't think we'll be able to save this one either. Yeah, I'm going to give up on this one. See if we can save at least half of the four discs that had bad sectors. Yeah, I can hear it retrying on that one too, but it started going again. Yep, still has some bad sectors. So, our four discs with bad sectors, after bulk erasing, we were able to save one of them. Which has pretty much been my success rate at trying this. So, it's not a guarantee, but it's worth trying anyway. So, is it a good idea to buy a bulk lot of used floppy disks in unknown condition? Sure, why not? It's interesting to see what files and data people left on these disks, but you have to be respectful of their personal information. And also, there's a risk of viruses being on these disks. I checked these disks for viruses and I did not turn up anything, so that was good. But there is a risk of 30 or more year old computer viruses lingering on old floppy disks, and it can still potentially infect your computer today. So that's another thing to watch out for. And of course you may end up with some disks with bad sectors. So that's just the look of the draw. Not all floppy disks are still going to be usable after 30 or more years. But as you can see the vast majority of the ones I got still are. And for about $15 including shipping for all the disks you see here. I certainly can't complain.